It doesn't matter how good the treatments are that we develop for cancer, heart disease, Alzheimer's, and any other of a number of the most common ways we finally die. It really is just a game of whack-a-mole. But let me break it down into a bit more detail for you, and then we can think about a better way to move forward. A great term I read in David Sinclair's book, Lifespan, was whack-a-mole medicine. We spend a lot of time and money looking for treatments for, and subsequently treating, a whole range of conditions. And when I say a lot, I mean an enormous amount. And we do not get many years back, even when those treatments are successful. You see, globally, non-communicable diseases account for more than 60% of disability-adjusted life years, 70% of deaths, and more than 80% of years lived with disability. Of these, cardiovascular diseases are a group of disorders of the heart and blood vessels, and these conditions are the number one cause of death and make up over 30% of all deaths globally, of which 85% are heart attack and stroke. Somewhere in the region of 18 million people die each year from this, and many more are incapacitated, unable to carry on a productive full life. These conditions are primarily caused by tobacco use, alcohol abuse, unhealthy diet, obesity, and physical inactivity, all lifestyle choices. The economic costs associated with these are estimated to be in excess of a trillion US dollars each year. Number two on the list is cancer, and it accounts for around 10 million deaths each year. And again, a significant number of people left with their life changed, even if they do survive unable to work and in need of ongoing medical attention. We spend more than 100 billion US dollars globally researching cancer each year, and its estimated economic costs are in excess of a trillion US dollars a year, even greater than with cardiovascular diseases. Now, Alzheimer's comes in at number five after respiratory diseases and lower respiratory infections, being a cause of death for over 2.5 million people. Now that's a lot, but cancer is four times higher, and cardiovascular diseases are nine times higher. But it still costs us in excess of one trillion US dollars globally, and it's growing fast. We could go on, but I'm sure you'll get the point. This is a lot of money in no uncertain terms. So, let us assume in a perfect world we have cures for these conditions. All this money would be buying us a much longer lifespan, surely. But you would be wrong. You see, if we could totally cure cardiovascular diseases, the average lifespan gain would only be 1.5 years. Now, if we could stop all cancers, the average lifespan gain, again, would be just about 2.1 years. Now, this doesn't seem like such great value when you consider it on such terms, although I'm sure those who are impacted cherish every extra day. And as for Alzheimer's, well, it doesn't so much as shorten your lifespan, but it massively reduces your health span and can cause death through multiple other avenues. But its impact on those who love them is arguably the most destructive element, alongside the massive financial burden. And we haven't even talked about diabetes, respiratory illnesses, and the many others. All of which not only kill, but before they kill, they make large sections of your end-of-life experience severely depleted. They take away your ability to do what you want, to enjoy your family and friends, your memories and experiences, and they leave you spending ever larger swathes of your time in hospitals and care homes. Is this really the experience that we want to extend? Now, I am not for one second suggesting that we stop treating these conditions or looking for improved treatment plans, but the fact is, if we do manage to successfully treat one of the life-threatening illnesses, then in a few years, another will raise its ugly head, and the next, 
especially if you are one of the large majority that is already not taking good care of your physical and mental health. However, if you are already taking it seriously, you have probably already reduced the likelihood of their occurrence and also the severity of any issues if anything did happen. If you are a healthy weight, follow an active, not sedentary lifestyle, do not smoke, only drink occasionally, not habitually, have a good circle of close friends and eat a well-balanced diet free of highly processed items and rich in colour variety and nutritional quality, then you are already in the lowest risk categories for most conditions and additionally with the best chance of recovery if anything does happen. The only risk factor you have been unable to bring under your control is your chronological age and unfortunately this one bumps them all up by an increasing amount as time progresses. The hard fact is, it is the risk factor. Or to put it bluntly, the risk of smoking brings about a five-fold increase in cancer risk. Being 50, the risk goes up 100-fold, and by 70, it's a thousand-fold. Sobering statistics. And if we look at this chart, you can see everything just seems to go crazy as the years progress. And this has a log scale to make it easier to visualize. Now, there are scientific models and theories that can help us understand why this is. And we can target specific areas with even just simple dietary or lifestyle interventions. But it is beyond the scope of this introductory video. I shall take you down that rabbit hole in the future. The current system truly is just like a game of whack-a-mole. You target one and then wait for the next to rear its ugly head, survive cancer, then get hit with cardiovascular disease or Alzheimer's or diabetes or liver disease, or maybe get several at once. And yes, aging does get a cursory level of investment, but it is usually siphoned off towards targeting a particular branch of a disease. And that is hardly surprising because even now, just using language like aging could see you lose a vital grant to a more worthy cause with better defined goals and a clear direction to head in. But you see, all they represent really are branches to the same tree. If we can just target a common region, we can take them all on at once. And yes, if we could find the right point before any of the physical symptoms manifest, we could even maybe avoid the need for treatment of the disease itself. And then think what life would be like where there are no long hospital stays required as you get older. There are no decades sat decaying in nursing homes as the memories that made you who you are drift out of reach day by day. Then think about all the private and public money that would be freed up and what that could be spent on. Enjoying extended years in good health and fitness, playing more with your great grandchildren than you ever did with your own children and not creaking and groaning and running out of breath. The thought makes me look forward to the breakthroughs just around the corner both the ones to keep me healthy and the ones to keep my life more simple and more enjoyable rather than the struggles from yesteryear. So yes, aging is the mother of all diseases, it is true. But there are things we can do today to help put us on a better path and within the coming decades we should see breakthroughs that amaze and astound and that is exactly what you can expect to find here on making tomorrow better.